Good morning and welcome to Oasis of Life Ministries. We're glad you have chosen to join us here this morning. The Lord is on the move. He's speaking to us and he's about to speak to us very strongly. The Holy Spirit is moving and he'll move for you as well. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you this morning for this great opportunity we have. To hear the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. To hear his voice speak to us and speak to our hearts. And speak the truth to us. And we thank you for that. And Holy Spirit help us to open our hearts. To see that truth. To hear it. And to know that we can live in it. And by it. And we thank you for the anointing in this place right now. And we thank you for the message that you are about to bring forth. I am your servant. I am here to serve you. My voice is yours this morning. Use it to minister to these precious people. But Father, when we leave this place, we will know. We will know beyond a shadow of a doubt. You are with us and you are for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? We thank you for this this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I told you to go ahead and put the outlines the way that Larry posted and he posted the outline that I gave him. But on Thursday, as I was looking and studying a little bit more on the glory of God at 1215, there was a stirring in my spirit as I was sitting at my desk. And I sat back because I knew the Lord had something to say. So I sat back in my chair and he said, write this down. And I'm going to read you what he had told me to write down. This is the word of the Lord for the year 2023. 2023 will be the year of the conqueror and the manifested glory of God. We've been in the times of refreshing since the fulfillment of the day of Pentecost. It will take fully persuaded faith and walking in a virtuous life to accomplish the manifested glory. We, the church, were given the prophecy for 2022. Correction, direction, protection, and perfection. Following my correction through direction brings protection and perfection. Keep following that path. Keep following the perfect path to the Christian life I have prescribed. 2023 will begin the restoration of all things. Everything Satan has, allowed, has been allowed to steal must be returned and restored, and that begins now. My manifested glory is the restoration of all things. Fully restored, full life. The fullness of my blessing restored. Then there was a pause. But I just, I knew it wasn't done. And the Lord came back with this just, just a few moments as I sat there. He said, 1 Timothy 1, 18 and 19. These are my words to you for 2023. Let me read those two scriptures to you. This charge I commit unto you, son, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, whereunto you are called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. That's the word of the Lord that came to me on Thursday at 12.15. As you saw, it took maybe about five, ten minutes. And he had told me to write all this down. And then he said something that really has to settle in my spirit, has to settle in my life. He 
because I want you to write this down, he said. This is the word of the Lord concerning 2023 to Jerry Lawrence, God's appointed prophet to Licking County. I shook my whole body when he said that. I had Mark Barkley in 1986 call me out of a meeting over on Lancaster Drive in uh, Newark and talk about the ministry that God was calling to me, me to, the prophet's ministry. 1998, Hilton Sutton, we were at a meeting in his place and he stopped, he was praying for several people, he came over to me and he said, I've got a word for the Lord for you. It's time for you to enter your ministry. And he said, you are anointed with the prophet's ministry. And he went on and said several things. Gary Wood, 2016, talked about the prophet's ministry. And here the Lord was solidifying this. And after he was done with all this, I remember Brother Hagin would get a prophecy or a word from the Lord. And he would stop the Lord. He would say, Lord, don't go yet. <clears throat> don't stop. I want scriptures to back up what you just gave me. Am I right, Larry? Yeah. I want scriptures from you to back up what you just gave me. So I said, Lord, I believe this is from you, but I want the scriptures to back this whole thing up. And over the next, the rest of that day, and Friday morning and Saturday morning, he, he just, he laid out all these scriptures, and I want to share them with you because he had told me to. I was going to hold this, and he said, don't hold it, release it now. So, we're going to look at this. So, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Now, the first thing that he said was 2023 will be the year of the conqueror. And the manifested glory of God. Those two go together. Now folks, there are some things in this world right now we need to conquer. There are some things in this country we need to conquer. There are some things in our own lives we need to conquer. And we need to conquer them in order to release the manifested glory of God. Romans 8 verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. There's something we've got to understand. Transgression of the fall of Adam in the garden affected everything in this world. And it's, an, it's been an ongoing thing. As a matter of fact, if you read the book of Hebrews, you find out that Adam's fall even had an effect on some things in heaven. They had to go in, in heaven and clean all the heavenly utensils, the book of Hebrews says, because of that fall. But Jesus came. I said Jesus came. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus turned this thing around. And then on the day of Pentecost, put it into the hands of the church, the body of Christ. Yeah. Now it's not that we're doing what we're doing on our own strength. We're doing what we're doing on the strength of the Holy Spirit and on the Word of God. Amen. 
So if we will let the word of God govern us and the strength and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to work through us, we can become those conquerors. And we can, the, the world, everything's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, Brother Jerry, I thought the sons of God, we're the sons of God. We've already been made that. But they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hello? When Jesus, all that time in the Old Covenant, they were waiting for the manifestation of Jesus Christ. And when he came and he began to walk this earth, what is it that he did? Matthew 9 says he preached and he healed. We're his body in this earth right now. We're to preach his word. Let me say it this way. Not what we think his word is, but his word. And we're to heal. And the Bible guarantees us something, folks. Mark chapter 16 says that if we'll preach the word and preach the truth, he will confirm that with science following. Somebody asked me this week, made a comment. We've been to many churches. We're not seeing the gifts of the Spirit flow. We're not seeing the power of God flow. Then maybe, as the church, as the body of Christ, we got to stop wandering around and settle in where God has set us so that we can help to have those things be in operation. Because, look, folks, churches have stopped the gifts and the flow of the Spirit because there's been too many um, play acting, too much play acting in the church. Oh, we got to have a move of the Spirit, so we act like the Spirit moved. Oh, there's got to be a tongues and interpretation, so we got to do that. The Bible says, as the Spirit wills, folks, as the Spirit wills, He'll give us those tongues and the interpretation as He wills. He'll give us, I wasn't asking for this. But this is His will. I believe. Now, let's look at verse 37 here. Verse 37 says, Nay, in all these things, in all the things that Paul has been writing down from God up to this point in this book, all these things we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God loves you. Amen. And so he has put us in a position to be more than conquerors. In other words, not just conquer something and get a victory, but take back everything that's been stolen from us. Go to 2 Corinthians. And the second chapter. Verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. In other words, folks, if we step out of Christ, we aren't going to have any triumph. So we've got to understand Christ as being the anointed one with his anointing, the yoke destroying, burden destroying, devil defeating power of God. Folks, it's not men and women we 
are looking to defeat today, it's the devil that is behind them. Right. It's not us trying to defeat the politicians or the news media or the false church or the bad education in this country. It is the devil that's pushing his agenda, and we are here to stop it. Amen. Amen. And we are more than conquerors. Amen. And God always causes us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savor, the sweet fragrance of his knowledge by us in every place. In every place. In every place. Does that include Johnstown, Ohio? Yeah. Amen. Does that include where you live? Yes, it does. Amen. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death and unto death. To the other we are savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Now watch verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. The church has a new language. It's Christ's language. When those people went into the upper room and the day of Pentecost came, they had a new language. Peter had a new language to speak. You read some of the things he said when he came out of that upper room. He was a changed man. He had boldness and authority. And folks, we've got the same thing today. We've got a new language that language is in Christ, in the anointed. It's an anointed language that speaks the anointing. It's a language that speaks the fact and the truth that God's word and God's spirit working through the church will destroy yokes, destroy burdens, and defeat the devil every time. He has caused us to triumph. Always. First John 5, 4. First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God. We got any whatsoever's here this morning? Amen. How about you out there? Are you a whatsoever? If you've been born of God, you're a whatsoever. And we overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Our faith. Our faith in God and our faith of God. Now, the next thing he told me was we've been in the times of refreshing since the fulfillment of the day of Pentecost. Let's go over to Luke 24. Some of this I'm going to go through pretty quick. Luke 24 and verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, and tar but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And, and there's been a lot of talk. Well, we gotta we gotta sit, we gotta tarry, we gotta wait. They had to wait because the day of Pentecost was set by God as a particular day. That day has come, and now, any time, any place, any moment, the endowment of power can come upon us. Right. Amen. To be endued with power means to be covered or filled with it. Now, let's go over to Acts chapter 1. Verse 8, but you shall receive power. Hope your neighbors say we're going to receive power. 
after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and under the other most parts of the earth. In other words, the power is the witness. Try that over here. <laughs> the power is the witness. Amen. One more time. Can't get over here yet. The power is the witness. Amen. What is the world looking for? What is the church looking for? Power. Sing songs. Oh Lord, send the power just now. He already said it. Amen. Yeah. It's already here. Oh, sure. The power came with the Holy Spirit. Receive the power. That's it. But what we have to say right now is it's been lying dormant within the body of Christ. We don't know how to use it. Or we don't know we've got it. And I think it's a little combination of the, of the two. Look at verse 14. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So there were 120 people in that upper room. And isn't it amazing that what God was doing in these people could bring all 120 of them into one accord, Great. one agreement, in one place. Yeah. Amen. And they did it through prayer and supplication. Supplication means to bind yourself to the promise of God. They bound themselves together to the promise that God was going to endue them with power. That they were going to come out of this upper room under a power that they had seen in operation in Jesus for those three and a half years. Yeah. Great. Well, why did it take ten days? I think it would have taken me ten days to start to understand I could walk in the same power Jesus walked in and displayed. Great. Hello? Yeah. Are you here this morning? But here's the point, folks. We've had almost 2,000 years since that day of Pentecost. To realize that we can walk in that same power. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they all were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there come a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit came on, came in, and began to speak through them. Right. Amen. That's the voice of Christ. The anointed voice that the world's been waiting to hear, and quite frankly, so is the church. But it's going to come through us. We have a new language to speak in Christ. Amen. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 3. He said that the fulfillment that we are in the times of refreshing. Now watch this. Repent ye therefore, verse 19, Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution or restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. You know, God began to speak the birth of Jesus very early on. He spoke it through all the prophets. But you know what? 
That birth didn't take place until 4,000 years later. That was a time for it. The prophet spoke it. And it came to pass. Right. And if you read your Bible, there were a couple of people in the temple who decided we're going into the temple and we're going to pray and we're going to seek God and we're going to do this until the Messiah is born into this earth. And as soon as Jesus was born, they knew it. Right. Simon was one of them. And he was in the temple praying constantly, and he knew Jesus was born. And he said this. He said, now I can die. Hmm. He couldn't leave until he got an answer to what he was praying about. We're in the time of refreshing. But the Lord says now, it is time for the restitution, for the restoration now. He said this, it will take fully persuaded faith and walking in a virtuous life to accomplish the manifested glory. How many want to see the glory of God? How many want to experience the glory of God? Then we're going to have to do it by faith, and we're going to have to walk in the virtue that God has told us to walk in. 2 Peter 1.3, you're familiar with it. We've been talking about these scriptures in 2 Peter all year. Verse 3, according as his divine, God's divine power has given unto us all things, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. We're called to it. God wants us living in the glory, not just a, an occasional experience, but living on it. Adam, before he fell, was covered with the glory. Eve, when she came out of Adam, was covered with the glory. They didn't know anything but the covering of the glory till they fell. We are to be covered with the glory. Glory. God's manifested presence. Virtue. Moral excellence. You can also define virtue as holiness and godliness. And it's real simple. Religion, religion has made holiness, godliness, virtue very difficult. But it's real simple. Act like God. Act like God. You know, it was back uh, a while ago, what was this, in the 70s or 80s maybe, the kids in the church were wearing these bracelets. What would Jesus do? To remind them, what would Jesus do in this situation? I think we might need to get on bracelets for all the adults. Amen. Hello. Well, I got one amen. Praise God for that. <laughs> huh? That's what it is. What would Jesus do in this situation? Or that situation? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do when the clerk gets nasty with you in a grocery store? A driver cuts you off on the road. Hmm? What would Jesus do? Or for me, what would Jesus do when the telemarketers called 15 times in a half hour? <laughs> <clears throat> Turn to Mark chapter 11. But I don't get finished this morning in, in this prophecy. We'll pick up next week. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. I've got a cross-reference cross here that says, Have the faith of God. And we've said it before, and I'll say it again. In order to have the faith of God, we're going to have to have faith in God. But a lot of the church has stopped at faith in God. And has gone to the place of having the faith 
of God. We've got to get the faith of God. And here is the faith of God right there. See, God believes us. He's talking, Jesus said, I don't do and say anything, but what I've seen of the Father or hear from him. Amen? So what Jesus is saying here, God said to him, For verily I say unto to you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. That's the law of faith, right there. That's how faith works. That's having the faith of God. But here's the point, folks. We've got to get over to a point where we believe the words coming out of our mouth are going to come to pass. Let that sink in for a moment. Not some words coming out of our mouth. All are words. Now listen to the rest of this. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you have, shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. That's the law of sowing and reaping. If I want to reap forgiveness, I need to sow it. Yeah. But let me show you something in this. We, the church, were given the prophecy for 2022, correction, direction, protection, and perfection. Following my correction through direction brings protection and perfection. Keep following that path. Keep following the perfect path to the Christian life I have prescribed. Now, in this passage right here, as I was reading this the other day, as the Lord was laying this out with the scriptures, I found all of that. I found the correction. I found the direction. I found the protection. And I found the perfection. Let me show it to you. The correction. When you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any. That's the correction. The direction is... For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall speak unto, say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Up to that last little statement is the direction. We got to talk in Christ. And the perfection is, you shall have whatsoever you say. The protection is, in the last statement in verse 25, if you want the Father to forgive you, you got to forgive, and the Father will forgive you your trespasses, and you will be perfected. Everything that Brother Copeland was talking about for this year, and he spent all year talking about all this, that's all right here in Mark chapter 11, 22 through 25. If we'll follow God's correction and forgive, he'll give us the direction of what to speak with our mouth so that we are protected through his forgiveness and the perfection will come, the glory will come <clears throat> when we follow that plan. Yes. Amen. Second Peter 1, Peter lays out the plan, the perfect plan or the perfect path for our Christian life. Let's go over to 
like to go into more detail on a lot of this, but right now we, we want to see this the scriptures that go along with this prophecy. You okay so far? Okay. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of God that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these exceeding great and precious promises you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped, look at the way God talks, having escaped, having escaped, not waiting to escape, but having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Right. We have an out here, folks. And I'm going to say this. Our out at this point in time is not the rapture. Our out is partaking of the divine nature of God and speaking in Christ. That's our out. Then we escape the corruption. Think about it, folks. When Jesus walked this earth, he, he made a lot of people mad. <laughs> he was upsetting the government. He was upsetting people's religion. They wanted to kill him, but they couldn't touch him. They couldn't touch him. They couldn't stop him. Come on. So the path we're looking at, number one, know who you are in Christ. Know the new birth and what it did for you. Know the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number two, obtain like precious faith. Number three, know your rights in God's kingdom and your right standing with God. And know this, folks, you are forgiven. Number four, understand the grace and peace we are to live in. God has given us this grace which supplies everything we need. His grace is his word. His grace is a person. It's Jesus Christ. His grace is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Number five, God has provided everything for our life and godliness. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come to give you life and give you that life more abundantly. Folks, it's time for the body of Christ to start living that more abundant life. We got to catch something here. The abundancy that God is putting in our life is for two reasons. Number one, to promote his covenant. And number two, to make the world jealous. Right. Well, God don't care about our finances. Yes, he does. Right. And I'm going to show you that too. God does care. Why? Because they're his. Amen. And they're in the wrong hands right now. Come on. I am absolutely amazed at a person putting out 40 and 50 million dollars in advertising to get a job that pays $178,000 a year. Yeah. You got to be more to that job than that $178,000 payment. I'll move on. Number six, we are called. God has literally called us to live in his glory while we live a virtuous life. And number seven, we are to partake of the very divine nature of God in order to escape the corruption that's in this world.
Folks, we, we, we have an opportunity here. The, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we read of them. Oh, wow. All that that Jesus did. Oh, wonderful. Isn't that Jesus great? That's wonderful. That is great. And he did. But what he was showing us is how he partook of God's divine nature to escape the corruption in the world. And how we should do the same thing. <clears throat> Let me go with one more point. 2023 will begin the restoration of all things. Everything Satan has been allowed to steal must be returned and restored, and that begins now. Turn to Proverbs chapter 6, and I'm going to close this this morning with that. We'll pick it up here next week. Proverbs chapter 6. You get anything out of this this morning? Yeah. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if a thief be found, the thief shall restore sevenfold. And the thief shall give all the substance of that thief's house. The real thief is Satan. Amen. He's the thief. Well, back Lynn and I were talking about this. And the Lord said something to me. He says, look at her parents. Is okay. He said they were givers. Years and years of giving, but they weren't reapers. All that they should have reaped in their lifetime was stolen from them by Satan. Lynn is her their daughter. I am their son-in-law. I have a right to their inheritance. A sevenfold inheritance of everything they gave over 30 or 40 years. Well, that's a wrong name, man. <laughs> hmm? How about yourself? Has Satan stolen anything from you? Then he owes you on a sevenfold basis. And he needs to give back everything that he has put in his house that he has taken from God's people and from God because he's taking it from God. Yeah. Amen. And here's the point, folks. This restoration, the body of Christ, the church, is about to clean out Satan's house. Hallelujah. It will be in our hands before we leave. And the story of that is Israel coming out of Egypt. They plundered Egypt before they left. They took all their, their silver and gold and piled it on them. Come on. And oh yeah, when Israel left, there was not one feeble one among them. We're not going out of here the sick, broke, tired, and wore out. We're going out of here the blessed. The blessing of the Lord. It makes one rich and God adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Stand up and give the Lord a shout of praise in this place this morning. And you can do the same in your living room or where you are. If you're driving a car, pull over and get out and shout and praise God for what you've heard today. Amen. I have never had the Lord go into such detail on anything as he did here. 
This is ours, folks. Now, and here's the point, and we'll pick this up here next week. You can believe it or not. God is leaving that choice in your hands as to what you do with it. And the same for any of us. We can believe what has been said here today or just pass it off. And there's another, you know, whatever. Believe what you want. As for me and my house, we're going to trust the Lord and believe what he said. Amen. And we're going to walk in it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We love you out there. May God bless you. And right now, yes, sir, Father, I release the anointing of the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit to go through that camera and rest upon every person out there. If there's any sickness, disease out there or in here, that blood of Jesus right now is flowing upon it and cleaning that up and the anointing is destroying the yoke of it. And we thank you for that, Father, right now. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. Nelson, what do you got?